All right, we're here now discussing the difference between column breaks and page breaks. Um, knowing the difference between the two is really important, and they're fairly easy to, to use. Now, I do have a multiple column layout, and it's a two-page layout right now. My, uh, if I go to my master pages, you will see that it is two columns per page. That's my grid I'm using, pretty simple grid. Now, I do need to start separating information. In this case, I'm looking at a menu. I need to start separating information so it makes sense visually. I'm going to have appetizers and beverages in this first column. I'm going to have specials go into the second column and then flow into vegetables. And those specials and vegetables are going to take up the two columns. And then the word welcome is going, the uh, welcome area is going to take up the fourth column. Now, this was a, a menu design that was designed so that this far right panel folded over and this far left panel folded over, and it was a gate fold. So the menu opened up like a gate. So when you, we typically, uh, the prime real estate in, in page layout is actually the right hand side. So when they open this flap, the word welcome pops up. So it seems a little backwards in a way, but in this format, if this were folded over, uh, it would actually work out pretty well. Okay, so. Here's how we're going to manage column breaks and page breaks. I get my cursor, and before the word specials, if I go to type insert break character, and I want this to break to the next column, I choose column break. Now that doesn't break it to the next page, it breaks it to the next column. The keyboard shortcut is the enter key on the numeric keypad. Now if you have a laptop, sometimes you don't have the numeric keypad on there because you don't have an extended keyboard. So you may have to go to type and insert break character and tell it it's a column break. Now what's going to do, it's going to automatically put that type in the next column. Woohoo! Now, if I did this incorrectly, I'm going to hit Command Z. If I did this incorrectly and I did a page break, what's going to happen? I'm going to put my cursor here. I'm going to go type. I'm going to say insert break character and do a page break. Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted. Not in this case. Sometimes you will want that. You will want things separated into a whole brand new page. And you would insert a page break. But in this case, I don't want that, okay? So I'm going to delete that, and I'm just going to insert a column break. Again, I just hit the Enter key for a column break. So it's pretty simple as far as the difference between the two. If you want something to come to, to go on a new page, insert a page break. If you want something to go to a, in the next column, insert a column break, okay? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it kind of flows in. It flows automatically into that next text box. Either way, with a page break or a page break. Yeah, with a column break or a page break, it will automatically flow into the next text box. Assuming there's a text box there. If there's not a text box there, you may have to click on the red symbol and draw a text box. I just happen to have text boxes. Let me take a couple of text boxes away, and let me insert a page break so you can see what's going to happen here. So type, insert break character, page break. Nothing. Where is it? I don't know. This is assuming we didn't use autoflow. So I just click on the little plus sign and I can drag my new text box. Oh, there he is. Okay, so if you haven't used the autoflow feature, you may have to click on the little plus signs and, and keep building it. All right. I just have, go ahead. Uh huh. If you wanted it in its own box after you already have it in the other box, you mean what if you hit it's not this the end of your and you want that to be box. in its own box um, because maybe it's sent, maybe you have two columns underneath it. Yeah. So maybe you have this column going like this and you want specialties like this. Let me move this down a little bit. Sometimes we have to break things down into separate boxes. And I'm going to paste it in there. My little box, uh, text box is too small. And it's centered above there. So is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, I did that hoping that I'm, it, I wouldn't do this in a 100-page document. 
Because as soon as somebody decides to take something out, I've got reflow. Um, so I might manage that quite a bit differently than what I just did. How is the question? So let me let me think this through. Because of because of reflow, sometimes I'll use tables in that case, which tables are a little bit more advanced, I think, than what we're ready for. But so it might end up being just separate boxes. But um, I might use tables because tables automatically flow with the rest of the text. Anytime you have uh, one big whopper across two columns, I would use a table. Now, you could do this. You could say, okay, specials, you are your, these are all still linked up. You're all up there by yourself. You could spread this text box across underneath it. And then you can tell this to make it two columns. In the paragraph, I believe, let me click on the uh, T. If I go to the paragraph formatting, I can say, hey, make that two columns. And that will help a little bit. And then when somebody decides to take something out, like, oh, guess what? We can't afford to make this anymore. That vegetable went extinct. All those vegetables went extinct because of some reason or another. Severe drought. Uh, and this went extinct over here because of severe drought. These flow just fine. Okay, they just go ahead and continue to flow. So that's another way to handle it, and everything's still linked up. Now, I do want to have welcome to move over to the next page, or I'm sorry, the next column, not the next page. So I will hit a column break there, okay? Now, this is something I really need to share with you guys, too, is if instead of clicking and dragging, maybe, you know, this is too high up. Maybe I want this right about there. Instead of clicking and dragging and window shading down, there is a way uh, to center this text vertically. If I click on the text box, and the keyboard shortcut is Command B or on a PC Control B. How do I get that? I think it's Object. Object Text Frames Options. Command B or Control B. I can tell the justification for the vertical justification for text. I can say, hey, center that. Turn on the preview. It does it all by itself. Okay. Where's this on there again? Exactly. What, no, what, what menu is it on? Object, oh, okay. text frame option, command B, or control B. And you tell it, instead of lying on top, you can tell it to line to center or bottom or whatever. This way you're not having to click and drag on your text boxes and move them. And if you do have reflow, say they decided to get rid of all of this, the, oh, well, it only is for that box. Darn it. It, it only applies to the box you selected. So even if I had reflow, it won't center this because this box, its text frame option is just regular. But this old box, the text frame option, it was centered. So it's not a paragraph formatting issue. It's actually a object option issue. I was hoping when it reflowed, it would automatically center there. So that's somewhat useful to people, is being able to center something within a box or with, you know, without having to draw multiple boxes and get them in position. Um, that can help, help out a lot. Can you, um, on the master page, make text boxes? You can make text boxes. So Yes, you can. The only problem with that is that you have to then release those boxes from the master page because they're locked. So if I were to draw text boxes here in position, yes, right, and you just go ahead and you're like, okay, I got my column width, my, I did my ABC little trick, and, and now all my text boxes in there and they're empty. Um, you can even link them to one another. Whoops, excuse me. By clicking, now I haven't shown you guys this. This is pretty cool. You can link them to one another by clicking on the little empty box and going from on the bottom corner and then going to the next top corner. And you can. So, so yeah. So when you um, when you uh, import text, it will hopefully fill. The only problem with this, though, let me show you, is when I create new pages. Oh, excuse me, I have a 
I have something I need to turn off there. When you create new pages, oh, sorry, I'm getting click happy here. I'll put two uh, pages after that. Those text boxes, you can't click on them to activate them because anything on a master page is locked. So you might as well just go to, you know, you might as well just go in and if you have extra text, you know, just go to file and place and hold down the shift key and let it auto flow in there. Because yes, you can get an automatic text frame on the master page, but until you release them by holding down shift, command, click, shift, command, click, shift, command, click, shift, command, click, until you release them, they're not available to work with. So why even do it if your columns are in there? Just go ahead and import your text and link them. Okay? So yes, you can, but how useful is it? It does come down to how useful is it? It's a good question, though. Okay. So not only did I cover column breaks and page breaks, I also covered text frame options, which was a freebie for you today, by going to uh, object, text frame options, and you can align things bottom, you can align them center. Now this is only vertical alignment, it has nothing to do with uh, horizontal stuff. And um, you can even inset some spacing. Let's say if you had a border on that, now it does mess with your tabs a little bit if you're using tabs, but you can inset it away from the box so that if you do have a border around that box, a stroke on that box, let's put a one point stroke, the type isn't sitting there all claustrophobic right on the stroke of that box. Let me hit the W key so you can see it. So when you stroke boxes or put borders on them, you need to also use that object, text frame options, uh, and use the inset spacing to get that text away from those edges. You don't have to draw two boxes. A lot of people will draw a box and put a stroke on it, and then they draw a text box on top of it, which is really inefficient. So you guys can inset the spacing of a box so the type doesn't go right to the edge. All right, so that concludes column page breaks plus text frame options. A little freebie there.